Welcome to the second video in our Visuals and Technical Communication series. In this video, we will explore graphs and describe the best practices for using them. Graphs and charts are, in simple words, an illustration of a relationship or trend that is not easy to understand simply with the numbers. Graphs distill information so it can be understood in a single glance. For example, the bar chart on this slide visually displays data about fatal and serious injury crashes. The data are visualized by the period during the day that they occur. The different colors on each bar represent different modes of transportation involved in these incidents. The chart makes it easy to see during which portion of the day the highest number of incidents occur, during which portion the fewest occur, and that automobiles are the mode most commonly involved in serious and fatal crashes. Depending on the nature of your data, you will use different chart types to create effective visualizations. Common types include bar graphs, line graphs, pie charts, and scatter plots. Before you begin, carefully consider which graph type is a good fit for your data. For a review of different graph types and their uses, we have linked some excellent resources in the description box below. When you are creating graphs, it is important that you pay attention to labeling it correctly and completely. The lines and colors on a graph need to be explained so your readers can interpret your data. To ensure they can do this, your graphs should have the following elements. A figure title and caption, including a figure number, axis labels, a scale or key, and data points and labels. Each of these elements helps you build a complete graph design. After labeling your graph, you should next consider how to design the clearest one possible. First, don't use any unnecessary visual elements like heavy tick marks or grid lines or 3D bars or patterned gradient fill. Second, make sure your data are clearly visible. Consider your graph style choice, scale, and design elements to ensure visibility. This example on the screen is unnecessarily cluttered with excessive grid lines, a thick data line, too many colors, and other extraneous elements. By cutting the clutter and focusing on having distinct plot points and data line, we improve this graph dramatically. If you include a graph in a report, you not only insert the figure into the document, but you also write about the figure in the body text of your report. Your audience expects to read about a figure in the body of the text before seeing it. You should refer to the figure by number, such as in the example on the screen, is shown in figure three. Your figure should then be inserted in the first available place after the paragraph in which you refer to the figure. Be sure to number the figures by the order in which they appear. Once you start creating graphs, it can become difficult to not use them for all sorts of data, so it's important that you know when not to use one, as the overuse of graphs can mislead readers. First, when you're dealing with descriptive content, such as the example on the screen, comparing amounts of detected chemicals in finished water at various locations, a graph may not be the best choice. Tables that demonstrate the comparison can do a better job. Graphs may also not work when you have many data points, and depicting the exact value of all points is important. Too many data points on a graph can impact the quality of the chart and hinder the reader's understanding of the content. Finally, if there's no clear trend in your data, graphs are not effective. For example, when you're documenting the cost of items in a lab, there is no relationship between different equipment. In this case, a table would be a better choice. In conclusion, graphs can quickly and clearly communicate key ideas about your data to your readers. Carefully consider your chart type and design to ensure it can do just that. Stay tuned for part three in this series where we explain how to create effective tables.